Hello, today we're going to be creating a new catalog item within ServiceNow. To do that, we're going to demonstrate what an item is and how people access them. Then we're going to look at how to create a catalog item and look at the different configurations we can apply to enhance the experience for the end user. Now I'm going to try and cover as much as I can without getting too confusing. If there's anything people want to see more of, then add something into the comments below. I'll be doing all of this on my personal development instance from ServiceNow developer site, which is on the Orlando version. If you're not sure how to get hold of one of these, again, comment below and I'll try and help you out as much as I can. So as a brief insight, a catalog item is a way a business user can request something. Upon submitting the request, it generates what we call a request item. Now it's this item that allows a fulfillment user within the back end of ServiceNow to process the request and fulfill it. Now let's get started and take a look at a, an existing item. A typical way of accessing these catalog items would be through the service portal. So I'm using the standard at the box service portal, which we can see on the screen. With that, you have a very handy option, which says request something. So on clicking on request something, that takes us to another page, which is the service catalog. Now within the service catalog, we have multiple categories. So we can see them here on the left, hardware, offices, peripherals, role delegation, software. Where we see categories with a plus sign, that tells me there are categories within that category. We've got nested categories. Now you can have multiple levels of nested categories. I would advise to perhaps keep that to a level of two or possibly three. Um, that will just allow ease of navigation for the end user and also ease of administration in the back end. So let's select mobiles. So when selecting a category, this is where we see our list of items that are within that category. So for the purpose of this, we're going to select the Apple iPhone 6S. So within here, this is where we have the item itself. We have our short description at the top. We also have a more in-depth description which can aid the business user in their request. And we can also put a pretty picture on there as well. Now underneath that, we can start to ask questions to the end user. Sometimes we may not want to ask any questions to the end user. For example, if we are providing an iPhone 6S and the only color you can have is black and you can only have one specific data allowance and one storage, then perhaps you might not ask any questions. But for this, we're gonna ask them some questions. So let's go ahead and do that. Now what you can see here is this, this gave me a default option. Now when I've clicked on that, I can select another option and what that will do, that will change the price of that item dynamically. So if I was to select unlimited, it will add money to my monthly data plan. Let's go ahead and select a color. Again, with storage, this will dynamically add or remove money from the price itself. Now, navigating to the top right, I can select the quantity. So perhaps I'm doing a bulk order for myself and my team. And underneath this, this is where we have the price. So the price is set in the back end, but based on what I've selected, as I showed before, the, the price and the monthly cost could change. And we also have the delivery time. From a business user point of view, this tells me if I submit this request now, I'll expect delivery within two days. So we have also have an option to add to cart. Again, this is standard feature across many shopping sites now. I can add this item to a cart and perhaps I want to order a laptop as well um, and a new desktop or a monitor. I can add all those to the cart and then submit them all in one go. For now, we're going to select order now. Now selecting order now brings me up a further screen which allows me to put more information in. So that allows me to tell the, the fulfillment team who it's requested for. Now it's going to default as me. I'm logged in as the administrator. We're going to leave that for now. But it allows me to add further delivery information. 
if we have any special instructions I can add, add them here leave by bin and then we're going to click check out now what that's going to do is take us to the summary screen of our order now this will show us the total price the quantity and the price of the item itself okay and this also shows us a very helpful list of stages so these are the stages we can expect as a business user this item will move throughout in order to fulfill my request now we're not going to cover stages and workflows on this video and we'll cover those at a later video but we can change those in the workflow we can have as many stages as we want and we can we can make the stages appear how we want and, and say what we want them to that are helpful for the end user in order to understand what's going on with their request okay so we've seen how to access a request and how to submit one as a business user now let's look at how we create a catalog item from an admin point of view so within the back end of ServiceNow, we're going to go to the application navigator and in the filter navigator we're going to start to type maintain catalogs so from here we can see that this instance has three catalogs that we can add to now we're going to keep it simple and we're going to stay in the service catalog so within this service catalog record we can tell that this catalog is made up of 36 different categories within those we've got 142 different items now for this demo we're not going to create a laptop or a mobile phone or a desktop we're going to create an item for a new car now I know because I looked before that we haven't got a category that would help us there so we're going to need to create a new one click new and we need to give it a title appropriately named title of cars because we came from the service catalog form you can see it's already pre-populated the catalog field so we don't need to change that we're going to keep it simple we're going to save that and now we can start building out our item itself so from the item record again because we came from the category it's going to pre-populate certain items for us for example cars as the category you'll notice that it hasn't at this stage bought through the catalog itself and that's because we may want to add it to multiple cat uh, catalogs but for now I'm going to leave that is and we're going to give our item a name so what car are we doing we're going for a BMW 3 series and that isn't because I drive a 3 series it's probably because I saw one driving past the window when I thought about doing this video so I've just saved that and I've done that just so I can show you when we save the record for the first time that's when it brings through the service catalog now at this point it's always a good opportunity or a good time to go and check your work and, and check that it's being built the way you want it to be built okay and we can do that by going straight to the portal refresh and we can see we've got our new category of cars we go in there and we've got our new item at the moment that's pretty boring there's nothing to it it's very vanilla okay so let's go and add to it so on the catalog item form we can add a short description we can add a further long description so as you can see I've typed there this field here is HTML supported so we can add more um, enrichment to this field um, to make it as flashy as we like but at the moment I'm just going to leave it as is metadata 
So metadata is words or phrases that the end user might use in order to find our item that we've just created. So we can go for BMW. We'll just add some things in there. Move to the process engine. The process engine is when the item is submitted, what's the mechanism that the ticket that's created will use to be fulfilled? So ServiceNow gives us three different options here and we can only select one. So we can have an execution plan, we can have a workflow, or we can have a flow from the flow designer. Now, today we're not gonna go into any of these in any great depth. Um, I'll certainly be doing a video on flows and flow designer shortly. Uh, and I'll also go through one on workflows. But for now, we're gonna change to workflow. We're gonna pick a very generic one. Now, in order to make our item a bit more attractive and look a bit more fancy, we can add a picture. Okay. We can also add the price of the car. Now, in truth, I don't really know how much a BMW 3 Series is, so I'm going to guess at around 40,000. I'm sure some people will tell me that's too low, perhaps. I don't know. We can also do some, some configuration around the portal settings. So here we've got an option to change the request method. So the request method, if I go back over to the portal, is more or less what you're going to see in this section here. So at the moment we've got order now, we can add multiples to the cart. So I could order how many? 10 BMW 3 Series. Probably not wise to leave that there. So let's change that. Based on we, what we select for the request method, these little select boxes are going to change. So if we go for submit, so that's hiding the add to cart, hiding quantity, hiding delivery time. We click request, not hiding delivery time. I think we're going to go with submit because we can't, at the minute, we don't know how long this BMW is going to take to arrive. So we're going to take that away. So let's save that and then let's go and have a look. Okay, so we've got our item, we've got a flashy pick, we've got a little bit of description. Now we've got the price and only submit. We can't request three or four of them and we can't add it to a car. I think that looks all right. Now we could leave it like this. So we could say that, that we're only fulfilling um, BMW 3 Series. There are no options and it is £40,000 and that's the end of it. I think we all know that BMWs, you've got multiple different options. Okay, so we're going to add one or two of those on. We're going to give the requester a bit more of an opportunity to, to stake their um, personality on this car, I think. So we go back to the item. Now towards the bottom we have what we call variables. So variables is the questions and the answers that we're going to give the requester or the person requesting the item the opportunity to answer. So let's create one. So what might be good questions to ask the person that's requesting a new car? So I think we, we're going to ask them, I think we're going to ask them their name. That's probably a good idea. Now when I click tab off that, it pre-populates the name of this variable. Now question is the label that's going to be presented, name is the system name which allows us as administrators to get at the value within this variable and we'll look at that within the workflows um, video that I'll do coming out in a week or two. So we could leave this as a single line text we have multiple different types that we can select, but this is only for internal users. So we're going to go for a reference. A reference is where we can reference a different table within the system. And we're obviously going to reference the user table. User table. And we only want to see active users. So let's submit that.
So we're asking the person what their name is. Another option that we might, or another question that we might ask is perhaps we want to know about seats. Perhaps in our BMW you've got different options for different seats. So we're going to use what we call a select box for this and that's that's a fancy term for a drop down box. So we've got our select box defined, we now need choices that the end user can select. So what kind of different options do you have for seats? We have leather. So if we choose a leather seat, perhaps we want the price to go up. So let's say it goes up by 300 pounds. So notice what I did there before I, I entered 300 is I changed the price um, from dollars to pounds. Now I did that because if we left it as dollars, it would do a conversion and give us the dollar rate. And we don't want that. So what's going to happen is when someone selects leather, the price of the, or the 40,000 um, that the car is, is going to go up by 300. So what other options might there be? We're going to have cloth. Now we're going to be nice on this one. We're not going to increase the price at all. That's standard. Go back to our item. Okay, so we have two questions. We've got the person's name, what seat they'd like, and perhaps let's do something a little bit different and um, we can ask them for um, hands free kit installed okay we're going to need to know whether they want a hands free kit or not um, I think that's probably a bit 1990s I think most cars just come with hands free kits now but let's leave it in again it pre-populates the name for me and we're going to make this a yes or a no and we're just going to leave it like that so now that we've done that let's go back and look at our item okay so we've got that question seats name hands free kit installed yes no um, Okay, so there's a couple of things I want to change on there. So the order, that doesn't really make sense for me. Um, it's defaulted to leather as well, and yes. So maybe we want to change that. So if we come in here, let's tackle the order first. Now, within the variables, you can see there's three different titles, type, question, order. If you don't see order, you can add it to the list. And then we can start ordering our fields. We're going to ask their name first. We're going to then find out what seats they want. And then we're going to then hands free kits. Now I always put 10, 20, 30 or 100, 200, 300. And the reason I do that is because if I need to add more variables at a later date and perhaps they go in between them, I can just slide them in without having to reorder absolutely all the questions. Now the other thing we wanted to do was to give the option or not the option the the ability to not default to an answer so what we're going to do there is go to type specifications and we're going to go include none what that means is when we load this item the seats field will be none and then we can make it mandatory So if we just go back and have a look at that. Okay, see, so it's now mandatory and it's defaulted to none, meaning I have to select something. So if we come back to our item 
and we're going to do that same thing for the hands free kit installed simply include none and I think just to finish this off because I don't think we're going to add any more variables we're going to keep it basic we're going to select mandatory I think it's pretty key to know the person's name so let's go and have a look so there we have our item it's asking me the name what seats I'd like if we add leather it adds 300 pounds to the cost hands free kit installed yes and then what we'll do is we'll click submit and that will use the workflow that we defined in the back end for a standard request item okay so I hope you've enjoyed the demo I hope you've um, learned a little bit about how a business user might access a request how they might submit a request but also from an admin point of view how we create a request how we add a new category and how we can enrich that request itself and in future videos we'll be expanding on what we've learned today and learning more about variables variable sets and workflows using workflow and flow designer if there's any other topics you want me to cover please drop a note in the comment below please don't forget to subscribe click the bell icon thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it and have a great day